Yeah. Come on. Yes. Yes. Oh. Oh, well, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and to what is now part five of the repairing my Volvo XC90 challenge. And won't take a genius to work out. We're no longer in the garage. If you saw the last episode, we left after completing, well, some of the works, but now the XC90 is back, back home. And actually this is the first time I've come to see it in almost a couple of weeks, because after filming all of those garage videos, I took some time away and the car has just been parked up here collecting leaves actually, as we're well into the autumn now. You can see it's looking a little bit worse for wear, but as I mentioned in the previous episodes, there's still some bits and bobs that we need to do. And I've just noticed that, well, that's a massive pain because this, of course, is one of the tires that I replaced. Or one of the wheels, this whole wheel is a replacement, isn't it? Um, why has that happened? I have to admit, I've sort of used the car as well since getting back as a bit of a storage unit. You can see obviously some of the spare parts in the back there too, but there's also a bunch of camping stuff that my wife and I have uh, just sort of used the car to store. Uh, but what we should really do is jump inside it, see if we can start it up. And what we're gonna do today, as we're no longer in the garage, there's still various bits and bobs that it's gonna need sorting before the MOT is we're gonna have a look at Vida. I've got a copy of Vida, a really, really kind subscriber of mine, drove all the way out here, dropped me off a laptop with Vida installed and a thing to plug into the OBD. And so hopefully what we can do is scan codes, maybe get more information on what's causing the ABS light, but also potentially looking at the fuel injector again and trying to code it. Although after looking at lots of your comments on episode four, it seems like it could be the copper seal or copper washer, I think you guys said. Uh, that was causing my issues. Anyway, let's see if the car unlocks first and foremost. I'm not sure the car's gonna start. Can I just say, there's a smell that this car has and it's absolutely lovely. I don't know what it is, I absolutely love the smell. This is really weird. This is like the first time I've sat in this car in almost a month, really, actually. The seats in these XC90s are so comfortable. Can't believe we've still got this thing. I honestly was ready to sack it in after I did the video where I took it to Volvo for an inspection and they gave me that huge report and told me that it, they, they told me it was uneconomical to repair, which of course it would have been at Volvo. I thought that was uh, was game over, but lots of you said you wanted to see me tackle it and that's why we've been doing this series. But uh, I feel like we're gonna have to do a little bit of troubleshooting today because, oh yeah, oh yeah, look. Great. It's, uh, Definitely a bit low on battery. Should we see what happens if we try and turn the key? Yeah, literally nothing. And I'm gonna open this door actually before it locks me in. Right, so before we do get started with anything else then, you can hear the locking module having a little bit of a fit there. Before we do anything else then, I'll have to go and get the other car bring some jump leads around and uh, get this thing started up. So I went over to get my Audi TT so that I could jumpstart the Volvo. As a matter of fact, this Audi was also a co-part purchase, costing me only £475, and I've been using it as my daily driver for the past four months. Having said that, I've not actually driven the TT in almost a month either due to being away and a recent load of press cars I've been lucky enough to have. Videos with those coming soon. Nice. Very, very reliable, this car. I cannot quite believe how incredible it's been. Just passed over 140,000 miles in it. And yeah, it's not skipped a beat. It's extremely good on fuel. It's just like never seems to run out. It will do easily 400, 450 miles on a tank and it's only 70 or 80 quid to fill up. And then you've got all of these sort of quirky design features. Love that as well. It's a really cool car. You do have the rear seats in the back as well if you want to use them for extra storage because they're certainly not for people. But today is about the Volvo and hopefully being able to use that as a daily driver. So um, let's just run this car over to the Volvo now, see if we can jump start it and then hopefully we can 
pump the tire up and have a look at Vida. We'll get there. So as we drive the TT over to rescue the Volvo, I just want to shout out today's video sponsor. So let me say a big thank you to today's incredible sponsor, which is Y Food. Now, as most of you watching this will know if you've been watching for any period of time, on the channel, I've been using Y Food for a long time. For someone like me that's all over the place and might find himself in a garage for a week, Y Food is extremely, extremely useful. Y Food make these completely balanced, ready to drink meals, and they come in handy more often than not, whether it's the fact you are in a garage working on your Volvo XC90 for a week and you're not sure exactly when you're gonna be able to have a proper meal, or like more recently when I was traveling across the Atlantic Ocean, super long flight, got to the destination, didn't quite know when I was next gonna eat, but I had one of these with me which sustained me until that meal. They're high in protein, high in fiber, they're lactose and gluten free. Best thing about them though, to be honest, is that they're absolutely delicious. So if you'd like to get yourself a box of Y Foods to try for yourself, which I strongly recommend you doing with a nice discount, then use the information provided on screen or down in the description below. Thank you so much to you guys for watching and thank you to Y Food for sponsoring today's video. Okay, well, I think we should be close enough to the Volvo. Get the bonnet open on this one. Battery's in the front of the TT. And we've got some jump cables, hopefully, in the back. Like I say, this has been my sort of daily driver and I sort of use it as a van. <laughs> in the sense that you can fold these seats flat and have sort of this big load space with the hatch that opens up like this as well. Yeah, we've got jump cables. Um, first thing I'm going to need to do though is try and get the bonnet open on this car because I know that it's got a bit of a temperamental latch so sometimes it gets stuck but it wouldn't be fun if it was easy now would it so normally it doesn't open here Day is no exception. So to get the bonnet open on the Volvo, you have to get a long screwdriver, ideally flathead or something similar, to move the catch out of the way. This seems to be a relatively common failure on these XC90s where pulling the handle no longer does the job. I got the bonnet up with relative ease and gently propped it with said screwdriver, although as you'll see very soon, that was a mistake. I connected the Audi to the dead Volvo, making sure the cars weren't touching and that I had a good connection on all of the touch points and then started up the Audi. Okay, Audi's running, cars all connected, so hopefully this one starts now, otherwise we're gonna have loads more fun, aren't we? All right, second time lucky. Put the key in the barrel. Oh dear, well it doesn't look great, does it already? Oh no. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh dear. For some reason, the Volvo just wouldn't start. I tried giving the Audi some revs and rejigging the cables and their connections, but the XC90 just wasn't responding. Finally she started, but my excitement was short-lived as the vibrations from the engine caused my makeshift bonnet support to fall over and then it slammed. Nothing is ever simple with cars, is it? Considering I just wanted to plug the car into Vida and now I was an hour deep into just getting some power to the car, I was a little frustrated. Having said that, it's to be expected when the car has been sitting for so long and I tried to use a flimsy screwdriver to prop up the bonnet. It took me about half an hour to get the bonnet open again and I was worried about the screwdriver and the jump leads going places they're not meant to. Luckily, everything was fine though and even my camera hadn't moved. So now we're back in the bonnet. I'm just gonna carefully not close it. And now we've done that, I'm gonna start the engine again. Hopefully it starts and then we can proceed with our day. Let's just see how this goes. Good. Right, so what I am gonna do in a second, once I've pumped that tire up, is 
just drive this 10 meters or so over to my actual driveway where I can then put it on a trickle charger and hopefully then we can just use ignition to run Vida and do the checks we want to do there. For the record, I am still paying about 200, well actually it's not that quite, it's over 100 pounds a month in car insurance for this car and uh, road tax, which I think is 300 and something pounds a year. I'm still paying that, even though the car's just been sat here, which is really frustrating. So all the more reason I wanna get it get it going again properly with, a, with an MOT. But yeah, we'll just roll it the 10 meters over to my driveway um, and plug it in and then hopefully we can go from there but the first thing I need to do is now we're running I can use the cigarette lighter to pump up hopefully the front tire all right now then I think we're ready to go the heater is working ferociously there we go that's much quieter isn't it wow I have to say I don't know if I ever mentioned but the heating obviously is is great but the air conditioning in this car is ice cold which normally every time you go and buy a car that's like that is the one thing that's not working is the air conditioning and it always needs a re-gas doesn't it but then it turns out to be something else but uh, in this car air conditioning is about the only thing that is working actually so yeah on that obviously we got the MOT issues we want to just have a quick look at maybe diagnose but I have got a plan for some of the more complex things and there's also all of our issues with the most system the fiber optic system that runs the sat nav, the dim display down here, my radio, subwoofer, CD player, all the rest of it, everything runs on this fiber optic system and nothing on that system for me is working. Like I can't access my radio, I can't access my sat nav, I can't see any information on the display down here. And so with Vida, which is the software I've, I've got, we should be able to use it for diagnosis. So we'll see, but uh, very carefully, we're just gonna move this car over to my driveway now. And here we go. Into drive. Big clunk as it goes into drive, about three seconds late. And there we go. Hopefully we can just limp this over to my driveway very slowly. Okay, there we go. While we're at it, should we see if we can clear some of these leaves? Let's just, uh, hey. <laughs> Probably ended up making more mess than I started with there, but it was fun. So very quickly before actually plugging Vida into the car, I wanted to put it onto trickle charge just so that it didn't immediately die again on my driveway. Right, so we plug this into the computer and then the OBD reader goes into the OBD port under here, just like any other car. So Vida is running. So what we're gonna do is open Vida and I need the car key to make sure that the ignition is on and then we should be able to read the car. So now we've got this all plugged in then, my plan is to have a little look in here, see if we can find anything. Vida's an extremely complex piece of software which I would need days and days and days to properly understand. So we'll have a look and see if there's any clues here, anything obvious that we can spot, see if we can work out a few things regarding the most system. Maybe they'll identify one thing that's not working, which we could potentially replace. But then I have actually got a plan for this car, which I'll tell you about in a minute. All right, so now we're logged in. I should be able to turn the ignition on, not the engine, just the ignition, and hit define vehicle profile. Now it should automatically register what we're in essentially. And it's found that we are in an XC90. All I've got to do is make sure I select that we're in a right hand drive one. Click OK. So now what I'm going to do is click update and it will do a readout, essentially just scan the car and it's reading everything, including the, the most system, but all stuff to do with the engine, any, any computer there is on the car, it's going to read it for us. So now if I go on to fault trace, it should have all of the issues. And interestingly, there doesn't seem to be that many problems. All of these amber things 
on here are, are problems. We can click into them and find out what there is. So the engine control module is orange, brake control module is orange, the central electronic module is orange, climate control module. So this is interesting. I clicked on the vehicle communication tab and in it, it shows all of the modules that are online. And the one that isn't online, or one of the ones that isn't online, is the infotainment control module. And in fact, all of the, yeah, everything that's basically on that system, it's not active. So they're all offline, apart from the phone module. That's the only thing that's actually online. Since doing the readout as well, I've got an ABS light just flashing on the dash which is also interesting. I'm not quite sure why that is. So this is really good actually, because you can do pretty much everything. You can obviously diagnose issues like you can on most scanners, but this will read everything. But also if I wanted to go in and run various tests with the fiber optic system, and also look at how to maybe do the ABS rings, for example, or code a fuel injector, I can do all of that in VIDA. Truth be told, I'm not gonna do any of that right now because I've actually booked this car to go into somewhere called the Swedish Car Clinic. Um, they are obviously Swedish car specialists based in Buckinghamshire. And I've decided that really I need to take it to an expert. After I did the stuff in the garage uh, last time out, replacing suspension components, for example, Either way, before driving this car, I want to get checked over by a professional. Hopefully they can sort of do the other side as well so it matches. But essentially, I need an expert now to look at the car and, and really give me an honest opinion on whether it's worth continuing with it. I've already sunk quite a lot of money into this car based on all the parts I bought for the series we're doing. And obviously lots and lots of time. And I think I'm at the point where my expertise level or expertise level ha has reached a bit of a plateau let's say for now at least with this car and it just it just seems sensible um to get an expert to to look at the car properly and, and tell me what's what so the idea is the car will get dropped off there they're going to do a full sort of check on it let me know what the deal is i haven't arranged to do any filming with them but i will of course update you in a future episode and hopefully you know they'll say you know xyz needs doing to get it through the mot and then here's a list of things that you might want to do in the future or you might want to do if you plan on taking it on a big trip so that's what i'm hoping for but the other consideration i've got is that also you know even if i can get this thing up and running i'd love to use it as a daily driver but some of my family members live within the new and the much loved ulez zone this car, of course, being a 2004 diesel is not ULES compliant. So in terms of a, a daily driver proposition, it's not the best option for me regardless. But despite that, I still really, really, you know, after all the effort, want to get this thing through an MOT and actually drive it. Like I've had this car several months now and I've driven it maybe 100 miles total. I had a couple of weeks with it before it had the MOT. But I've not even like taken this thing on a motorway, for example. It's never been above 50 miles per hour in my possession. And so, you know, I've got that itch I still need to scratch as well. So I'm hoping we can take it to Swedish Car Clinic. They'll give me a good update on it. Maybe they'll say, look, Joel, you need to spend a grand on it to get it safely through the MOT. If that's the case, I'll probably just do it. We'll be able to film some amazing videos with the car if it has an MOT, so totally worth the investment. But, you know, if they give, as a impartial specialist, uh, a damning report, a bit like what Volvo did, saying, look, you're going to be constantly chasing issues with the car. You're going to be into it for three, four, five thousand pounds by the time you're at a point that's acceptable. then I think we can all agree it might be time to move on. So I'll keep you updated in due course, as always. Thanks so much for watching all these videos. I apologise this one as part five hasn't been quite as uh, hands-on as the previous episodes, but of course we're back at home now. We're not in the garage anymore. I did what I could sort of plugging in Vida to see if we could work something out, but I'm just looking at all of this and thinking, you know what, it's, it's past the point of me taking things apart now. I think we need to take it to an expert. But yeah, I appreciate you all watching this video. I think potentially this is the final part of can I save 
my Volvo XC90 because from now on it's not going to be me saving it. Hopefully it'll be someone who knows actually what they're doing. But yeah, like I say, again, I'm so glad you all enjoyed this series. It was such a big learning curve for me and um, I really feel like it's paid off. So I'm very, very happy indeed. And I just want to get this thing drivable now, but I'll, I'll let you know either way. So whilst we wait to hear back on the fate of this Volvo then, there'll be a video coming out hopefully within about a month or so, because it's not booked in for a few weeks as I'm filming this. There's going to be some other content coming out on the channel. I actually had a brand new Range Rover, which I was using as a daily driver for a few weeks, a little while back. So there'll be a video coming out on that. I also had an Audi R8 on test, which I filmed a really cool video with. I'd love you to watch that when it goes live. Tomorrow I'm picking up a Porsche 911 Turbo S, which I cannot wait for. And again, filming some content with that. And then the week after I've got an Alpine A110. So lots of like new car, interesting car stuff to come out. So hopefully you'll be interested to, to watch that. Like I say, I won't forget about the Volvo. It is coming. There's just some other content to go out first. And on that as well, I am now looking for a different daily driver. I'm actually looking for like a Porsche KN or something like that. So I'll update you with all this stuff. So just to let you know, the Volvo series for now is over and it will be picked up once I have taken it to the specialist in a few weeks time. Wow, that's a lot of talking. It's been a lot of talking in this video, but I appreciate you watching if you've made it this far nonetheless. Make sure you subscribe if you're one of my 75% of regular viewers that have not done so already. We're really close to 100K now. It'd be amazing if we could tick over that milestone. And yeah, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And also, you know, let me know what you think below about this Volvo series and whether you think I should continue with it, which I'm going to anyway, but I'd love to hear your thoughts as always. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you very, very soon.